Hi viewers, welcome back to my channel. This is another video in the series of lectures that I've been creating to promote awareness of fine element theory and practice. In this video, we will see a very elementary concept, how to derive the stiffness matrix of a bar element. In fact, uh, there are different ways or methods using which you can derive the stiffness matrix for any element. A few of them are method of virtual work or method of minimum potential energy, and another method is direct method. In this example, I will show direct method because this problem is fairly easy and I want to drive home so many basic concepts that are in, in that are related to the concept of stiffness matrix that mostly once you start working as engineers, you overlook into those things. So we will look into all those things in this video. What I have shown over here is a two degree of freedom bar element these are the two nodes, node number one, node number two. And the displacements along the x-direction at node number one is u1 and at node number two it is u2. And there are external forces acting at the nodes again in the same direction because it's just a single degree of freedom at one node. At one node I am just having one degree of freedom that is x direction displacement when you start working with complex elements at one node itself you will have multiple degrees of freedom what i am trying to explain is that this particular node can move only in this direction but the moment you start working with beam elements then you can see this same node when you're working with a beam element it, it can go this way as well like lateral to this direction also it can move but for the time being this node is having only one degree of freedom that is movement along this x direction or along the axis of the beam to be far more precise uh, there can be a lot of formal definitions for the stiffness matrix but i would like to see stiffness matrix as a matrix that connects uh, the displacements to the external forces that are acting on an element. So U1 and U2 were the displacements at the two nodes of the element and F1x and F2x are the external forces acting at the nodes. Now I can see that for this element my stiffness matrix is of size 2 by 2. Why? Because I am having only one degree of freedom per node and altogether I am having two nodes make sense so if at every node at every node if I was having two degrees of freedom then the size of stiffness matrix would have been you can post my video and think yourself the dimension of the stiffness matrix would have been 4 by 4 why because instead of u1 corresponding to the first node itself we would we will be having two degrees of freedom so this will be replaced by a two by one vector this will be again replaced by another two by one vector which will in turn gives us a four by four matrix here so it's, it's these are just tricks that uh, you should keep in mind all the time uh, let's uh, do a thought experiment where i am moving this node by unity one mm or one whatever units you are working with and but i'm holding this point or this node with a fixed condition or I'm holding it fixed then what will be these two forces you may ask me what is the relevance of doing this sort of an example at this juncture because we are trying to solve the stiffness matrix and why are you solving this simple problem the reason is that if I translate this problem to a mathematical expression f1 and f2 can be written using the stiffness matrix like this. I will just zoom out so that you can see. See, there is a very important concept here. That is, the first column of the stiffness matrix are the external forces on the element when U1 is unity and all other degrees of freedom are held or fixed or are restrained to a value of zero or constrained you can say make sense so 
if I want to get the first column of stiffness matrix, I just have to solve this problem. Make sense? Actually, this uh, there's a very beautiful concept in matrix theory. That is, when you are multiplying a matrix like this, actually you are taking the linear combination of these columns. So, in fact, this is one vector, this is another vector. So, this vector will get multiplied by this value while this vector gets multiplied by this value. That's the resultant 2 by 2 matrix you are getting. So, sorry, one 2 by 1 matrix that you are getting. In this scenario, what happens? The constants corresponding to this vector is 0. So, you end up with just the first column itself. So, it's a beautiful concept in matrix theory to understand or to view matrix multiplication like this. You, I strongly recommend you to watch videos of Gilbert Strang to get more idea on matrix theory and all. Now, let's go to the second thought experiment. It's pretty straightforward. Now, I'm holding this end fixed while applying a unit boundary condition on the other end. Then also, I'm, I have to apply certain forces at the nodes to get this kind of a boundary condition. But this time, whatever forces I have to apply corresponds to the second column of my stiffness matrix. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, to generalize any term in the stiffness matrix, let's call it Kij. This is the force at node i. This, when j degree of freedom is unity, but all other degree of freedoms are zero. This can be either force or moment, but in this case, this is force. If you're doing a beam element, it could be the moment also. Then the degree of freedom will correspond to the rotation at that node. Make sense? Now let's solve this problem first in order to evaluate F1 prime and F2 prime. It's not that difficult because we know when we have a bar of area of cross section A and you apply a load of P, the load is related to the deflection like this where A is the area of cross section, E is the Young's modulus and length is L. This can be also termed as the stiffness of this bar element. The problem in our hand also looks pretty similar because uh, this end is fixed and we need to get a unit displacement at this node. So we need to apply an F2 prime which is equal to the Young's modulus times the area of cross section of this bar element divided by the length. So the nodes will be having certain x coordinates. So, so the length will be the difference in the x coordinates. Makes sense. So this is the force I need to apply here. If F2 prime is known, then F1 prime can is an easy thing to find out. Why? Because these two things have to be in equilibrium. Once you add those two, you should get zero because the element is not accelerating to the right side. It, it Since it has to be in equilibrium, F1 prime has to be minus Ea by L. So with that, now we have the first, sorry, the second column in our uh, stiffness matrix. A similar exercise can be done for this problem also. Now we are holding this end fixed while we are compressing this end by one unity. So what has to be F1 and F2, F1 and F2 can be found out as F1 should be minus Ea by L, sorry, F1 will be Ea by L because this is my positive direction and for things, since this whole bar has to be in equilibrium, my F2 has to be minus Ea by L. Why? Because uh, this is my positive direction of the X. So I'm pushing this end in this direction. And at this end, for this bar to be in equilibrium, I should push in this direction. That's why there is a minus sign coming over here. So now we have found out the stiffness matrix completely. And it looks like this. Why is it symmetric? Uh, it is because of those Metti-Baxwell reciprocal theorem, which holds true for linear structures. If two load sets act on a linearly elastic structure, work done by the first set of loads in acting through the displacements produced by the second loads of set of loads is equal to the work done by second set of loads 
in acting through the displacement produced by the first set. It may be difficult to understand. So let's take an example. Consider uh, a cantilever as shown over here like this. So there are there are two sets of loads. First set of load is this one, P1 alone. Second set of load is P2. So the first set of loads generate a displacement this and this. So the and the second set of loads generates a displacement like this. So the displacements at this point is uh, delta 1 2 this displacement at point 1 this is point 1 this is point 2 but this time it is due to the second load load pair while this is due to the first delta 1 1 is a displacement at no, node 1 due to the load set 1 that's why delta 1 1 so what does Metty Maxwell theorem Met, Betty Maxwell uh, theorem says that you add this is the work done by this force through the displacements caused by the second loads it is equal to the work done by the second load load set working through the displacements produced by the first load load set uh, is that clear i hope with this example it is clear but you may be asking if how this help to prove that the stiffness matrix is symmetric so uh, this is our bar element which we talked about a while before this is the first set of loads and this is the second set of loads see these are matrices of the size 2 by 1 and this load set causes this displacement and this load set causes this displacement so what does maxwell betty reciprocal theorem says the first set of loads acting through the displacement caused by the second set is equal to the, the I mean the work done equal to the work done by the second set of loads acting to through the displacement produced by the first set of loads why there is a transpose because we are computing the work and work is nothing but the dot product between these two vectors that's why a transpose coming here pay attention to that detail I can expand this mathematical expression as shown over here I can substitute f1 like this makes sense a b whole transpose is b transpose a transpose so i am expanding these equations here i am arriving here and finally i can take the transpose of this quantity also because this is a scalar so the transpose of the scalar has to be the same then once i take the transpose of this quantity i arrive here and this clearly indicates that k transpose equal to k makes sense so this is how using maxwell betty theorem how we can prove that the stiffness matrix for a linear elastic structure is symmetric so we saw the very basic concepts of a stiffness matrix what does each element of the stiffness matrix indicate and or oh, we sold the stiffness matrix for a simple beam element. Thanks for watching.